This is the brand new Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and in this video we will take a first look at the heart rate accuracy, sleep tracking performance, GPS tracking and oxygen saturation measurements of this new watch from Samsung. In the last weeks I already shared several videos in which I performed extensive tests on the standard version of the Galaxy Watch 5. However, many of you have been asking how the Pro version compares to the baseline model. So in this video, we will take a first look at the sports and health tracking performance of the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And honestly, the Watch 5 Pro definitely has some advantages over the normal Watch 5. However, if spending the extra money is actually worth it is something you will have to decide for yourself. And I hope that this video will help you make that decision. Now, as always, I do not want to waste your time, so there are timestamps in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, in my previous tests, I showed that the Watch 5 was good when it came to some sports and health tracking features, but not that great at others. Also, the performance of the standard Watch 5 actually seemed worse than the Watch 4 in some regards. However, the Pro version might actually be the watch in this new generation that shows some improvement. The Watch 5 Pro is larger than both models of the normal Galaxy Watch 5, with the Pro being 46mm, whereas the normal Watch 5 is available as 40 and 44mm versions. The Watch 5 Pro feels more premium, being made out of titanium instead of aluminum. However, the increased size and choice of materials also means that the Pro version is more bulky and heavy than the normal version. The normal version comes in a total of four colors, also depending on the size you choose. The Pro version, on the other hand, is only available in two colors, phantom black and grey. Now I have the grey version right here, which I think looks fine, though I'm not a fan of the standard watch strap that it ships with. However, if we swap that out for a brown band, I think it looks quite classy. Compared to the normal version, the pro version has a number of dedicated features as well, most noticeably some aimed at more outdoor activities like hiking and trail running. You can use the watch to navigate to points on the map and if you get lost there's a track back feature to find your way back to wherever you came from. However the main difference I notice between the Pro and the normal version is the much larger battery on the Watch 5 Pro. For me this means I'm getting about 4 days worth of battery life out of the Pro version versus just 1 or 1.5 one or even 2 days from the normal version. However despite the outward differences Internally, the Watch 5 and the Watch 5 Pro are very similar. They have the same chipset, and this is also true for the health sensors. They are the same across the entire Galaxy Watch 5 series. Specifically, all watches include an accelerometer, barometer, gyroscope, geomagnetic sensor, and light sensor. Importantly, they all also have Samsung's bioactive sensor, which measures your heart rate, electrical heart signal, and body mass composition. However, even though the sensors are the same, the Pro version might still perform differently from the normal version, given the different size and shape, and also the material on the back is different, which could all influence the fit of the watches. Now, that is enough discussion of the specs for one video, since in my videos I like to focus on independent testing of the sports and health tracking features. So, let's take a look at the actual performance of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and I want to start off with the heart rate tracking results. I tested the Watch 5 Pro during two spinning, two cycling, and two weightlifting sessions. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors, and I'll be looking at a total of two interval spinning sessions. Now this involves relatively little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here you can see an overview of that accuracy over two rides. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap 
and on the vertical axis the value according to the Watch 5 Pro. Now the closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement and the darker black the color, the more dots there are in a certain area. And as you can see, there's a really good agreement between the Watch 5 Pro and the ECG chest strap, as almost all points are along the blue line. Now the correlation, this R value up here, is also really good at 0.99. The correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so 0.99 is quite good. We can see why that is if we actually look at the individual training sessions. And here you can see my first interval spinning session for instance. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Watch 5 Pro. As you can see, the two lines overlap very nicely to the point where you can basically not see the red line at all. However, there are some moments with some small deviations, as you can see for instance here, but also here, where the Watch 5 Pro needs some time to catch up with the changes in my heart rate. However, these are minor issues. And we can also see this in this second spinning session. Generally, it seems to perform quite well, as especially here in this second ride, the two lines overlap basically perfectly. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed right here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. On the vertical axis, I order the watches from worst to best, so the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I mark the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro in red. And as you can see, the Watch 5 Pro is actually among some of the better watches that I tested over the last years. It's not amongst the absolute best, but it's doing much better than many of the other watches I've tested. If we now zoom in and get rid of some of the worst performing watches, we can see that even more clearly. The Watch 5 Pro is doing really well and seems to be very similar in performance to the normal Galaxy Watch 5 and the retesting I did of the Galaxy Watch 4. Only Apple watches and some Huawei watches which are known for their heart rate accuracy are outperforming the new Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Next, let's take a look at a more challenging type of exercise, cycling outside. Now generally when you're cycling outdoors, watches tend to move around and shift a lot more on your wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult for many watches. Let's see if this had a negative impact on the heart rate accuracy of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. I tested the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro during a total of two bike rides. Here we see a similar plot to before, but now for biking outside. The Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and the ECG chest strap still agree relatively well, though there are quite a few more points away from the blue line now. Especially here below, we see quite some points moving away from the blue line. The correlation is also lower compared to what we saw before for cycling outdoors, with the correlation now being 0.74. Now this kind of correlation is not great, but I also wouldn't call it terrible. We can see that in more detail if we look at the two bike rides themselves. The first bike ride actually looks really good. The red line representing the Watch 5 Pro mostly follows along quite well with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap in blue-green. Similar to what we saw for the normal Watch 5, some of the details are lost, but the ride looks really good overall. However, this second ride looks a lot worse actually. We can see much larger deviations of the heart rate measured by the Watch 5 Pro from the ECG chest strap. This is mostly exemplified by the Watch 5 detecting a too low heart rate at moments, as you can see especially clearly during this first part of the ride. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the watches I tested over the last years. Similar to before, we use the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the value on the horizontal axis. And the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, which I marked here in red, is somewhere in the middle of all watches when it comes to heart rate tracking. 
It's not great, but also not terrible. And it's actually very close in performance to the recent tests I did of the normal Watch 5 and the older Watch 4. It is doing slightly worse overall, though this could just be by random chance. Alternatively, it could be that the added weight of the Watch 5 Pro makes the fit around the wrist slightly less snug. However, future testing will have to show if this is actually the case. I would say that the exercises we have looked at so far represent easy and medium heart exercises for a watch to track your heart rate. So let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. This is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and on my arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting. Here we can see an overview of that accuracy, similar to before. However, now the performance of the Watch 5 Pro is much worse compared to before. There are many points away from the blue line, especially below the blue line right here. And the correlation is also much lower at 0.66. We can see why that is based on the individual training sessions. Again, in blue-green are the results of the ECG chest strap and in red the results of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Each time I do a set of exercises, my heart rate increases, as you can see in blue. However, the Galaxy Watch was not able to track this for the most part. Also interestingly, or more likely weirdly, it detected this large increase in my heart rate to about 160 BPM during weightlifting, which is actually super unlikely to happen for this type of exercise. And we can see the same thing in this second example weightlifting session, though this is potentially ever so slightly better. Still, the watch really struggles to track my heart rate accurately for weightlifting. So for this type of exercise, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro does not appear to be very reliable, at least not based on my testing. We can again put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And we can see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better the consistency with the ECG chest strap. As you can see, relative to other watches, the Watch 5, which I marked in red, is smack dab in the middle of all watches when it comes to heart rate tracking while weightlifting. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, I would really only use some of the newer Huawei watches and the Apple watches for heart rate tracking during weightlifting. Otherwise, I would just advise you to use an ECG chest strap since this is the most reliable way of getting heart rate measurements, as I showed in a recent video. So, based on my initial testing, I would conclude that the Watch 5 Pro is a decent heart rate tracker for cardio exercises, though there are definitely better devices out there. It seems to perform more or less the same as the baseline model of the Galaxy Watch 5. Overall, I would therefore give the heart rate tracking either 3.5 or 4 stars out of 5, since it's quite okay, though definitely not great. Next, I just want to briefly mention the battery life of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. One of my main issues with the normal model of the Galaxy Watch 5 so far has been the battery life, which has not been great, lasting me about a day and a half, I would say. My experience with the Watch 5 Pro has been significantly better though. I started using the watch on Wednesday evening and charged it to 100% late that evening. It's now Saturday afternoon as I'm writing the script for this video and I still have 36% of battery remaining. Now I still need to do some more formal tests of the battery life, but at least my first impression is very positive. Now next, let's take a brief look at the GPS or location tracking accuracy of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. I will show a more complete test in a few weeks. But for now, let's take a look at how well the GPS tracking stuck to the roads I rode on while cycling. Here you can see one bike ride I checked with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro while it was not connected to my phone. Well, actually you cannot see it yet since it took some time for the watch to acquire the GPS signal. Instead of getting the GPS signal right here, it took until I was right here before it got the signal. 
And I must say, even when it acquired the signal, it looks quite noisy. It isn't following along that well with the roads and it even has me going through some buildings, as you can see here for instance. And this is a bit of a general pattern for this ride, which you can also see here, but also here. And generally it's just quite noisy and deviating from the roads. And we can see some of the same things in this second bike ride, though this looks quite a bit better overall. The signal is acquired more quickly this time, though it did take a minute or two. And if we actually look at the quality of the signal, this is also a lot better. It follows along much more nicely with the roads I cycled on. We can generally see a much better agreement with the roads for this whole second ride, which makes the second ride look good overall. I find it difficult to make any final conclusions based on just this test. I saw some good things and some bad things, and many of the results remind me of what we saw for the baseline model of the Galaxy Watch 5. Therefore, overall, I would very preliminarily give the GPS tracking of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro 3.5 out of 5 stars. Let's now move on to what Samsung claims is one of the improvements on the new Galaxy Watches, the sleep tracking. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I'm not sure if they're referring to the actual sleep stage tracking or just the overall monitoring of your sleep, which also includes the new temperature sensor. However, here I will focus on the sleep stage tracking, since this is also something that competitors have been working quite hard on. Like basically all smartwatches, the Watch 5 Pro will track your sleep throughout the night and let you know when it thinks you were in deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep or awake. To check if the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. Now for getting an overall impression of how well the Watch 5 Pro performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the Watch 5 Pro in the future. Now on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device. And on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Watch 5 Pro. I wore both the EEG device and the Galaxy Watch to bed for three nights. And I will see how close the predictions of the Galaxy Watch are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2, was predicted as each sleep stage by the Watch 5 Pro. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that about 32% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Galaxy Watch, which is a pretty bad agreement. If deep sleep according to the EEG device was predicted differently by the Galaxy Watch, it was most likely predicted as deep sleep at over 50%, so more of the EEG detected deep sleep was actually predicted as light sleep instead of deep sleep by the Watch 5 Pro. And we can see that based on the individual nights. On top here we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Galaxy Watch. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. Now for this night we can indeed see that some of the deep sleep recorded by the EEG device was also recorded as deep sleep by the Galaxy Watch. However the Galaxy Watch tends to detect less deep sleep for this night and much of the EEG recorded deep sleep is actually marked as light sleep. And surprisingly, some of the deep sleep was also marked as awake time, which is also what I saw in my initial testing for the Galaxy Watch 5. This second night shows much of the same results, with some of the EEG recorded deep sleep also being recorded as deep sleep by the Galaxy Watch, but also a bunch of it being detected as either light sleep or awake time. Generally, a lot less deep sleep is actually detected. Light sleep agreement was actually better at close to 69%, though again this is not amazing. And if they did disagree, this was mostly with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro predicting REM sleep and awake time, both at about 12%. REM sleep agreement on the other hand was not good, 
only 44% of what was REM sleep according to the EEG device was also REM sleep according to the Watch 5 Pro. Much was actually predicted as being light sleep instead at about 38%. And we can see that clearly based on the individual nights as well. This is a similar plot to before, but now with the REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. As you can see, for this night, the REM sleep does not really match during the first half of the night, though the second half looks a bit better, so this seems to be a bit hit and miss. And this second night shows more or less the same. There is a decent amount of agreement, though the agreement is definitely not good. Awake detection actually agreed quite well at about 94% agreement. And if there was any disagreement, this was with light sleep, which makes sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. In general, the Galaxy Watch does tend to detect the awake moments that the EEG device also detected, as you can see here, for instance, marked in green, but it generally tends to detect a lot of extra awake moments as well, as you can see all throughout the night. And additionally, it also detected this really long awakening right here, where I definitely was not awake for that long. So it seems to be rather sensitive to detecting awake moments. And we can see the same thing for this second example night. The Galaxy Watch generally also detects what the EEG device detected, but additionally it tends to detect more awake time. To put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro to that of other watches. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. On the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. As you can see the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, the whoop straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro in the same plot which is marked here in red we see that its agreement with the EEG device is mediocre. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and Galaxy Watch 4 are actually similar in performance to the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So based on that result, I would say that they probably use the same algorithm in all devices. Overall, the sleep stage tracking of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is not that great. Similar to the other Galaxy watches, the only thing it appears to be quite okay at is detecting your total time spent in bed. Therefore overall, I would give the sleep stage tracking of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at a feature of the watch that became more important as the COVID pandemic started, namely measuring your oxygen saturation, or in other words, SpO2. Where heart rate is usually recorded using green light, red and infrared light are generally used to track your oxygen saturation. Now to test the oxygen saturation measurements, I wanted to see if the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro ever detects a low oxygen saturation when it's not supposed to. And I did this by taking measurements with the watch when I knew that my SpO2 was at normal levels. To test that, I took 40 SpO2 measurements with the Watch 5 Pro and systematically swapped the watch between both wrists. This way, I hope to get a good representation of the measurements it can take. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be within my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100% and should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration is much lower, as it is for instance in a low air pressure environment, my oxygen saturation can drop below 90%. The same can happen when you have certain medical conditions like sleep apnea or a respiratory infection. And here are the measurements that I took at ground level. On the left are the measurements taken with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and on the right the matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. So each dot is a single measurement and the SpO2 values are along the vertical axis. As you can see, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro on the left generally recorded somewhat lower SpO2 values than the finger pulse oximeter on the right. However, it does generally measure physiologically normal values. 
Only twice did it record an SpO2 value of 94%. The rest was all 95% or higher. And we can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often that value was measured. As you can see, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, which is displayed in red, recorded just slightly lower values than the finger pulse oximeter, which is displayed in blue. However, it performed much better than the baseline model Galaxy Watch 5 I have, because that one, at least in my testing, often recorded values of 94% and lower, which is much lower than I would normally experience at ground level. So overall, this is actually not looking too bad for the Pro version. Though I must say, this could be by chance or random unit to unit variation in the production. This means there is a small chance of getting false positive low measurements with the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Though at first glance, it does seem to do better than the normal Watch 5. Overall, based on the testing I've done so far, I'd give the SpO2 measurements of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro 3.5 out of 5 stars. In terms of sports and health tracking, I get the impression that the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro performs about the same as the normal Galaxy Watch 5. And as we saw in my other tests, this also means that it's not performing that differently from the older Galaxy Watch 4. Now, future firmware updates might change this, because we've seen that updates made major differences in the performance of the Galaxy Watch 4. Still, if you do not care about the battery life, the navigation features, or the different look of the Watch 5 Pro, you might as well get the much cheaper Watch 5 or even the Watch 4. However, if money is not an issue, I do quite like the look of the Watch 5 Pro, especially if you replace the strap with this brown one. Next, let's take a step back and see if I would actually recommend the Watch 5 Pro in general or even the Watch 5 for that matter. Well, from a health and sports tracking perspective, they are okay-ish watches with good heart rate tracking for stationary cardio exercises and the SpO2 sensor on the Watch 5 Pro also shows some promise. However, there are definitely better watches out there. I would mostly consider getting one of the Galaxy watches if you also care about the smartwatch features themselves and your focus is not mainly on the sports and health tracking features. Therefore, based on my experience so far, overall, I would give the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro 3.5 out of 5 stars. If you want to buy a Galaxy Watch, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. If your focus is on heart rate tracking specifically, I'd recommend an Apple Watch for iOS and the Huawei Watch ET3 series or Huawei Watch Fit 2 on Android. Of course, the best heart rate tracker is still an ECG chest strap under most circumstances. And there I have good experiences with the Polar H10. If you want good sleep tracking, I'd recommend the Whoop strap, a Fitbit and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. And you can find those videos right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on the Galaxy Watch 5 right here. Now, I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.